Hi Billy, that's Cameron. Hello. Hi. Thank you for giving me the honour of interviewing you today. I believe this is your first English interview, is that correct? I did three interviews on the Greek radio, but that was it. And was that in English or Greek? Uh, in Greek, that was in Greek. In English, uh, that's my first. Oh, that's awesome. We also appreciate you previously speaking to Roberto. Yeah. Before we start, I just want to point out to people listening that you have not been paid to do the interview or offered it in exchange to promote music or anything else. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay, so Billy, how did your story as a musician begin? Well, I started at the very young age of six when I was playing in the background. And then I developed. Awesome. Did you end up playing any other instruments? Yeah, I play also the rhythm guitar. I play very talented. I also write music and lyrics. What month and year did you start such as in Russian with Alvin and Eli? I think it was around uh, February of uh, 80, 81. Yeah, 81. Okay. There is a song known as a serious song on the internet, also known as Like the Wind. Do you mind if I play a section of it? You know, uh, Like the Wind is a perfect title, actually. That's good. That's another question I want to ask. Maybe two. And uh, in 1982, there was no space in the album for uh, for this and another and another four songs. So it's it's good, but uh, it seems like uh, music has a way of, of of getting around, you know. Definitely. Yeah, after years and years and years. Okay. Do you mind if I play a bit of it for you? Of course not. How was the song Like the Wind recorded? In the same studio we did all the, the album. Uh, was everybody in the studio? Yeah, yeah. Was it recorded in fragments? Oh, no, fragments. It was uh, like, we used to, to record, we, we practiced a lot in, in the house. I ran it in, uh, in a neighborhood here in Athens, and we stayed together, all together. So we did a little practice before we went to the studio. So we would finish uh, it song originally at once, you know, like we would, we would go back and forth. The only thing that we did uh, in, in the whole songs, going back and forth and recording fragmented, it was the drum session, because it was played uh, beat by beat in the drum. Okay, so you played the drums? Yeah, and the drums, and some bass lines, and uh, the other played uh, most of the bass, he played uh, the guitars, and he did also some drumming himself. Okay, um, and do you know who sang that song? He did. Oh, he did. Who did? That's definitely, that's definitely Alvin. Nobody else, no, no, nobody else can hear his voice in the first place. Definitely, I agree. His voice is just like, his voice is just like a signature, you know? And the whole album, it was, his voice was a signature. That's very unique. Yeah, the, the people that claim that it's not us, like Subject Motion is not the, the band that made this song, they don't know what they're talking about, and I challenge them to prove the contrary. And they can't prove that it's not you guys. So it's, it's obvious, yeah. Nobody else can sound like this. And also nobody else has claimed to be a part of the song other than you and knowing that George was a singer. Well, I thought it was a very big, big part of the song and of the album, actually. The album has much more interesting songs, actually, than like the Wing. But I think it just made it so big because of the title on YouTube, the most mysterious song on the internet. But unfortunately, I lost track of it since 1983, after I left Greece, for yeah. my European adventure. We couldn't play here anymore, you know, because, first of all, the, the P&R guy from the, from the record company I was, I was in, it took about a year to release the song, the, the whole album. And then Daryl went up with the situation. I, I got sick listening to my own songs over and over again without being released, you know? So I was very displeased, with satisfied with the whole situation. So I, after some money they gave us for advance, after the money I, I didn't take it from Calvin or Ellie King. I didn't get it from them, but I put it from, out from my own pocket. So I turned to the PNR guy. On the record company, and I told him, listen, I want the reels because I'm, I'm about to 
God to me for London. And he goes to me, listen, tomorrow we're going to go to the factory and we're going to produce the vinyl. I took uh, all the money he gave us in advance and I put it on his uh, desk and I told him, listen, give me back the wheels because I'm going to go in England and produce the whole thing there. And after this, it did, the thing split it up a bit and released the album. But I was already in London and I got 10 copies with an invoice there in Brixton. But that was the story of the whole thing. I, I was fed up with the whole situation, so I left. I didn't even stay here to promote it. I didn't even stay in that in place to promote it, despite the good reviews it had. Why did it take one year for the record label to release the album? Uh, but they had other priorities. They had their Greek stuff, you know the traditional Greek stuff and this and that. So they were paying attention to this material they had because we were an English-speaking band, actually. It wasn't so appealing to the Greek audiences. So I told them, listen, if they're not willing to do anything about it, just give me my reels and I'll go on to it. And after this, things started moving. That's usually the way. Okay, I'm going to play another part of the song for you. Yeah, okay. Play the synthesizer in that song? I played the synthesizers, I played piano, and I played in, uh, in another instrument that's called harpsichord and bass and the drums. How did the song make its way to German radio in the 80s? After, uh, after we split, I went to England, George went to Berlin in Germany. So he probably gave it to one of his friends over there, I don't know what happened. And it ended up, you know, years, years later after I heard it. <laughs> And I uh, immediately I recognized his voice, you know, there's just no question about it. This is him singing it. And how does it make you feel listening to the song when you do hear it now? It made, 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 it made me feel at loss, you know. I was at loss because I don't know how this happened after so many, many years, you know. And uh, it was a surprise for me, a pleasant surprise, I'd say, because I didn't expect that. It was coming out of the blue. But I felt good. I felt good. It finally made it. Because it's a shame, you know, we, we made so many good songs that they were excluded from the album. And uh, they were so nice. How many other songs were excluded from the album? Uh, five altogether. Do you know the names of those songs? I remember just... Uh, like the wind, I remember Pinky Complex, uh, another Broken Dreams, and the two others I don't, I don't even recall because I, you see I wasn't writing the lyrics, only came, but okay. I, I wasn't, I wasn't the main singer to to learn them. <laughs> I was focused on playing the synthesizers and the music, composing the music actually. What synthesizers did you use in the song? What synthesizers? Uh, SK10 Symphonic Ensemble for the background, and CS-15 Duo won by Yamaha for the solos and the phrases. Have you ever been interested in getting recognition for the song? Uh, well, I make music, you know. Sure, I like being recognized, but uh, that's not my goal. My goal is to make music. I have to give back to something that I took from it. Okay, how did you meet George Olambaras, and how would you describe him as a person? Band called Parthenogenesis, and we had a guitar player there, Kostas Prophylakis, who, after, after he left the band, Parthenogenesis, he formed another one with, with this guy, Alvin, George at the time, he formed another, formed another band called The Homicide, and uh, we used to take them as a support band so, to start the, you know, the show, and we got to know each other, <laughs> me and George, and uh, we got together uh, in, in many places, you know, like we used to go to many clubs. Mutual interest. And he was also Australian, correct? I knew he was Australian, yeah. Okay, and George is currently missing, not heard from since 83. Have you heard anything about his whereabouts then? No, unfortunately, I've tried. I've tried uh, like ever. So have I. Like to, to locate him. I even gave, I even, uh, 2017, I even gave a concert because uh, Ellie K passed away. And I gave a concert in Athens with the hope he will show up eventually, you know? It never happened. And his place, his, the house I used to, I, he used to live, we went there, was totally deserted. That's not good. Hopefully, this interview, it will gain a little bit more recognition and help find him, or at least give you an answer. Yeah, well, hopefully. How familiar are you with the whole story of how the mysterious song ended up on the internet? Uh, 
Was the person that messaged you called Gabriel? I think so. I think I'm not so sure. I have to check on my messenger dialogues. That's fine. Yeah, he has a Spanish name. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's him. But then after I played it, I was astonished. Like I was, I was, how can, how can this end up like this? How can it be, you know? It was a surprise for me very, very much. And then we got in touch. I, I gave you the whole story, like what happened. Because I wasn't uh, sure that the song was any of the statues in Motion Sound were made. Um, for people out there who don't believe statues in motion were behind the most mysterious song on the internet, or like the wind, what would you like to tell them? Well, I, I don't have anything to say to them. You know? Let them sing whatever they want. I have a, I have a saying about people. They eat your life and spit you dead. They try to prove you wrong. They try to prove you this. try to prove that. They don't even listen. They only listen to themselves, you know? So I won't, I won't stand here to drive you about it. That's their problem if they don't believe it. I know I've made the song with George and, and Ellie Kane, George Alvin Dean, I mean. Uh, we made it, all, the, all three of us, we made the song and we recorded it. And then was just excluded the other one. And that's the bottom, bottom line, you know? Yeah, I definitely believe you. And so do many others as well. What are your most memorable moments playing with statues in motion that you'd like to share? Well, we had lots of wild parties in a uh, community place called Snowball and in a house, in a home in, in, in Athens where we stayed together. And we had a lot of fun together actually. We were, we were buddies, we were hanging around together, doing things together. We were a group of people, you know, hanging together, doing things together. This togetherness was, was overwhelming, it was there, you know. We were young too. How old were you guys? I was uh, 20, and George was uh, either 19 or 20 himself as well. Oh, wow. Well. Uh, yeah, we were. <laughs> We're very enthusiastic. So you're working on Astro.now. How can people hear your latest work? How can people uh, listen to my work now? Correct. Uh, through, through YouTube, and uh, we have uh, we're on Amazon, we're on uh, iTunes, we're on many, many sites. Astro.now, you can download it. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure to finally speak to you. I will talk again. All right, bye.